So in the last video, I quickly sketched out this test specimen, and we're going to apply a stress analysis on it by fixing this left side in space, and we're going to pull on the right side with a force of 1,000 pounds. To do that, look for this simulation tab, and I didn't see it at first, but I discovered I had to go to tools and then down to add-ins, and in the add-ins menu, there was a simulation checkbox. This box right here I had to check to make it appear. So if it's not there, you might try that and see if you can get it to work. So once you've got that, click Simulation. And if you click Study Advisor, it's kind of a, a wizard. It'll, uh, SolidWorks will step you through some of the common, uh, common things that you might be interested in. But for right now, I'm just going to click the down arrow and select New Study. There's all sorts of different types of studies. We could do thermal analysis, frequency, buckling, all sorts of stuff. But let's just leave it as static. We just want to pull on it and, and uh, see what happens. So we'll click OK to make that happen. And a new tab appeared down here called Static. And I've got a new menu over here. The first thing we want to do, click Part. And once that's clicked, we could go Apply Material. Or alternatively, you could click right, right click and, and do Apply Material over here. SolidWorks has all sorts of different types of material, steel, iron, aluminum, plastic, silicon, even uh, different types of wood, if, I, if we wanted to make it a different type of wood. But let's do steel and let's do alloy steel, just for fun. So we'll apply that and click Close. One thing you'll note, if you did it right, a little check mark appears by the part over here, just saying that SolidWorks is acknowledging that we, we uh, made it out of steel. The first thing we need to do is fix the left space or the left face in space. So go up here, there's a fixtures advisor if you wanted more input on that, but I'm just going to click the down arrow and I'm going to say fixed geometry. And with that selected, I'll click this face, and you can see an annotation that just shows a cantilever beam, the left face is fixed. If I zoomed in on it, these are just showing that there are uh, it's not allowed to rotate in either uh, in all three axes and, and it, it can't translate either. So I'll click OK and we've now fixed it in space. And let's on the right side now we need to apply a load. So again we could apply uh, in this external loads box. I'm going to apply a force and I'm going to click there, this box, and notice it's under compression right now. The arrows are pointing there. So I'm going to go over here and click reverse direction. And that makes it, that puts it under tension. Let's do, for fun, I'm going to put it in English units because I know what a thousand pounds feels like. It's a big force. I'm not so familiar with Newtons. So with a thousand pounds, and then I go back to SI Newtons, and it does a conversion, about a little over four kilonewtons of force. So with that set up, I'll click the check mark. Everything should be good to run. You could just click this button. Let's click the down arrow, and just for fun, I'm going to create a mesh. And the mesh, it, uh, I'm going to make it really fine. I'll show you what it is in a second. There's other options down here, but I wouldn't uh, mess with them right now. So I'll click OK. And it generates the mesh. And what you're looking at, if you're not familiar with finite element analysis, it's doing a calculation at each one of these intersections on the part. We could uh, scroll around. The whole part in all three dimensions is uh, has been meshed. So we'll look at we'll be able to calculate values of stress for each one of these points, and each value is associated with a color. So if the stress was particularly high, we would see a color of red, and a low stress it would show us in blue. So we are ready to run the simulation. So I'll click this Run button, and you get a beep at the end of it saying. Uh, that it ha has completely or er, uh, successfully run. So here there's a results menu. We're, first off we're showing the stress. I can double click to show the displacement of the device. This just shows it, it got a little bit longer. The blue is just saying that it hasn't moved at all because we fixed this in space. The red just means it moved to the right a little bit. And I can do things with the uh, strain as well. It just shows how um, far apart the, the metal has been uh, pulled. And these regions tend to have real high strain and these regions in, in the corners here there's not a whole lot pulling the corners apart so the metal isn't really deformed over in these areas. And if I go back and cl double click on stress and if I right click it I can click animate and this will show 
in animation. Let me slow it down with this slider right here. It just shows how the part deforms. You could see things uh, stretching a little bit differently in these corners here. It's particularly dramatic if there wasn't a fillet in these areas and you see a, a large deformation of the material. Now note that this is uh, really, really exaggerated. A, a steel part with these dimensions would not deform this much with a, a, a force of a thousand pounds. And in fact, the drawing that you're seeing, if I hover over it, maybe you can see the line where the part originally was. In that line, it doesn't move up here again, but it shows that the, the part had been stressed, uh, stretched from this distance here, which is completely exaggerated. It's, it's just to, to show you what's going on. But I can right click again, click Edit Definition, and Deformed Shape over here, let's use, instead of automatic, instead of exaggerating it, let's use a true scale for that and click OK. And in that case, the deformed part, even though it's stressed and it has strained, the strain of this part is, is really, really minimal. And we don't see, if I double click on the strain, we see strain on the order of 10 to the minus 4, so very little deformation of the material. And under these conditions, if I go back and animate it, there's very little or no, I can't even see, a, I can barely see deformation of the, the sample down here. Maybe if I zoom way in on it, we could see something going on. But even a thousand pounds isn't, isn't enough to deform steel a whole heck of a lot. And if I showed it from the side view again, still under these conditions, not a whole lot of def deformation of the material, unless I zoom way in on it. So this just gives you a feel. I, I suspect that if I had chosen uh, selected rubber instead of steel, of course we would see a, a real dramatic deformation of a material like that, but steel itself is fairly rigid. Note that these results are quantitative. We'll see it in, uh, ten, it looks like uh, 13 times 10 to the eighth Pascal, Newtons per meter squared. And this is a von Mises stress. I can also right click, I can go to results, right click, and let's define a factor of safety plot. And what this will show is how far in excess of the yield stress is the, uh, is the part. And if that factor of safety is less than one, you're in trouble because the part is, has failed. And if you're shooting for a factor of safety of two or three, you're really looking for areas where that, that factor of safety might, might come down. Remember, recall a real high factor of safety suggests that the, the stress on the material is really small. So there's really not too much to be done. We'll click OK to generate the new plot. And the new plot looks red, and that like it, it, at first it scared me because I thought my factor of safety was incredibly low. But when I look over here, I see indeed it's uh, the factor of safety. It's uh, still about four and a half, something like that. But you can right-click here and go Chart Options. Let's get rid of the chart details, but let's show the minimum where the minimum stress, the minimum factor of safety occurs, and the maximum factor of safety occurs. So the minimum is shown here, it's about 4.5, and the maximum is uh, over 6,000, so it's certainly not going to fail at this corner out here. Let's also define our range for this red color. I see red as being dangerous, but still, we're at, we're at a, factor, a, safety of, a factor of safety of 4.5. So let's say, we'll call red the low end, let's say, if we're at a, factor, a safety factor of 1, let's make that red. And the upper end, I don't know, a factor of 10 might be a nice, a nice one to work with. So when I click that, it looks like things look a lot safer than they did before. So here we've got a factor of safety of, of at least 10. Here we're crawling down to about 5 or something like that. If I reran the simulation with a greater amount of force, what we would see is that this region in here would begin to show more and more red. And especially we would see some large reddish colors in these areas where the stress risers occur. So this factor of safety plot is a really uh, nice way to figure out how, how safe things are going to be or how your part might, might fail. Or if we wanted to look at that, if our factor of safety was particularly small around here, we'd probably want to redesign it with a larger uh, radius fillet or uh, perhaps add some more material or maybe even work with, design it with a, a stronger material in mind. One other thing worth looking at, we'll go back to the stress plot and let's right click and we'll go chart options again. And let's show the minimum and maximum stress. Get rid of the plot details over here. I can move these around just so I can see them more clearly. And let's scroll down and we'll just do, I'm just formatting the numbers just because it's a little bit, little bit easier to work with. So we're looking at 135 uh, megapascal 
for the maximum stress in this region, maybe 136 megapascal or something like that. In the minimum value, the stress in this region is only uh, 90 kilopascal in that range. So it's a little bit easier, I think, than looking at this uh, chart over here. So as you can imagine, with an analysis package like this, it's really, really quick to, to uh, uh, alter your, change your designs. It's really easy to, to apply loads and stresses, and, and uh, you can apply torques and everything, and just to see how your part will deform.